Hello, everybody. Welcome to Andre Thrive's Small Business Webinars. Today is Tuesday, March 5th. You are attending one of our weekly webinars created to help New Jersey small business owners start, grow, and thrive. Uh, welcome to the webinar. My name is Uzma Sheikh. I am a consultant here at NJSBC, which stands for New Jersey Small Business Development Centers Network, a statewide program powered by the SBA and partners to help New Jersey to help small businesses in New Jersey with three main things. And those three main things are no cost small business consulting, training and events starting at zero dollars, just like this one that you're attending, and exclusive small business resources. If you look at the map um, on the right, that's the map of New Jersey, of course, the state of New Jersey, um, and all the divide, um, you'll see all the counties of New Jersey. On some counties, in some locations, uh, there are small SBDC logos that you see. That's where our regional centers are located. Um, our offices, which we call regional centers, are located. So if you are ever interested in um, attending an event that is in person, or if you ever want to go in and make an appointment um, and speak with a counselor, then feel free to do so. But you do have to go to ngsbc.com, find out where those exact locations are, uh, and make that appointment. All right, so you are attending one of our uh, webinar um, sessions of the series, multi-session webinar series, which is how to register your business with our support created for aspiring entrepreneurs um, on how to start, grow, and thrive their small business. So you are in the right place if you're an aspiring entrepreneur. What is on the agenda for today? We have a couple of headlines that I'd like to share with um, you. So these are just things that are happening in the small business community that we think are important to share and uh, um, you should be in the know of. Then we have our presentation from our um, speaker and then we'll have our Q&A. While I do that, go ahead in the chat and let us know where you're from, what you do, what you're planning to do with your small business, anything you wanna share. Um, this is a great opportunity to network, I think. So feel free to do that while I share these headlines. Um, these are the small business headlines for the week. I will put in the chat um, the links. So as soon as I'm done sharing my screen, I will put them in the chat and you can open them and view them at, at your own time. All right, first is from February 20th from NJEDA. NJEDA is a great source, a resource to uh, be in the know of. It's New Jersey Economic Development Authority. Keep an eye on their, uh, 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 excuse me, about us and the media contact and the press release page. They always have great uh, information to share. Give me one minute. All right, so NJEDA to create grant program to help small business owners Purchase commercial properties. New pilot program expands Main Street Recovery Suite to offer grants up to $50,000 to reimburse closing costs after purchase of a commercial business property. So if this is something that might be of interest to you, then definitely check it out. And this is part of the Main Street Acquisition Support Grant. This is a pilot program that will help uh, business owners liquidity following the purchase of a commercial property. Um, let's see, the program will be funded initially with $5 million to provide grants of up to $50,000 limited to one grant per business per EIN and for one eligible location based on the demand that the, pro the program may be expanded to $10 million. So there are these applications and information and this is the website. Feel free to check it out. The link will be shared in the chat. The second uh, headline is from business.nj.gov. This is the official website of uh, State of New Jersey on the business side. So always keep an eye out on this, especially this page, all updates. Um, this headline is loan guarantees for investors in innovation focused companies. Innovation focused is the keyword there. Existing investors supporting early stage innovation focused companies in New Jersey can receive guarantees on their loans from the New Jersey Entrepreneur Support Program, 
the program provides guarantees at 80% of the loan amount, totaling a maximum of $500,000 to a company on investor loans for working capital. All right, and third, press release. SBA launches enhanced lender match platform. Stakeholders applaud improved online tool that will simplify access to capital for smaller businesses. This was published just yesterday. So this is a lender match tool. So if you're in the business, um, if you are seeking loans, then SBA lender match tool is a great uh, tool to know of and utilize. So approved bank and private lenders. The enhanced match will provide Americans seeking funding to start and grow their businesses with a simple online tool that will more effectively match them with the SB's competitive lending products and additional offerings from a trusted network of banks and private lenders. All right. And this is a long headline, so feel free to check it out. Um, on that note, I will just quickly point out that the NJSBDC can help you find the lenders, and we can certainly help you find um, the right people, the right resources, the right loans. However, please keep in mind that we do not lend. We are not a lending institution. We can counsel you, but we cannot lend to you. All right, all those things aside, some housekeeping rules, things to keep in mind of. If you have questions, put them in the Q&A box, please. I see responses coming in the chat, that's great. But if you want us to address um, anything related to the questions that you have regarding the presentation, then please put them in the Q&A box. If you complete a brief survey, then you'll find the webinar resources. So it's a Google form survey. Let us know how we're doing, what you'd like to see from us things like that. And once you complete the Google form, then you will get a link to the slides. And this webinar is being recorded. Link will be shared in the chat. All right, so today we have Vanessa Schwartz. Vanessa is one of our startup consultants. Welcome, Vanessa. Thank you for doing this webinar series for us. Today's topic is NJS Business Presents, a guide to business registration success. I'll stop sharing my screen. Please go ahead, present. Okay, thank you so much, Uzma, for that wonderful intro. I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> Here we go. And we're good to go. So my name is Vanessa Schwartz. I've been with the SBDC for about five and a half years. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about what to know about starting your new business. In particular in how to create an LLC. That's what we're gonna primarily focus on. But I do think it's important that in uh, discussing the LLC that you understand where it fits in um, with respect to uh, business structure and, and the offerings that are out there for you as a business owner. So as I always like to say, whether you're someone who is uh, looking to take your hobby to the next level, or perhaps you're interested in pursuing a side hustle, or you're a professional in your own space and believe the time is right to enter into entrepreneurship. You're making the time to educate yourself uh, on the process, the costs, understanding the legal requirements, tax consequences. All of this is, um, it's all very critical. It's critical in, in, in what you do as you get started and it could really make the difference in terms of your success. So with that, we're going to talk again uh, a little bit about business structures, uh, the formation and the registration process uh, for uh, coming into business and with special emphasis on the LLC. We'll address uh, some of the state regulations that exist for those of you who are looking to start a business in New Jersey, sometimes going beyond the formation and registration process, there's some additional items that you'll need to be aware of depending on what industry you're in, additional licensing or um, uh, permits. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that and, and resources of where to go to learn more about that. I uh, will address taxes. And we'll also talk a little bit about your funding and cash management. Uh, 
starting a business will require some initial um, capital contribution from you, the business owner. Perhaps you'll need some outside financing. We'll talk about um, what some of those options may look like and additional needs that you may have as business owners as you start your, your process and, and, and go along your journey. And next steps, what opportunities are there for you as business owners for growth and beyond? All of these items are items that we here at NJSBDC address, discuss, um, assist with. We're here to be mentors. And if we don't know the answer, uh, we will certainly try and refer you uh, to the right place. So uh, it's a great resource, no cost counseling and um, mentorship through uh, our services. So in terms of talking about business structures, I always like to start with the simplest one, the sole proprietor ship. A uh, sole proprietor is basically you, the person who decides that they would like to conduct some business for yourself. And you get to the point where, you know, it's coming along and you'd like to identify under a specific trade name. And in doing so, you can go right to your county clerk's office, um, or right now, I guess you can pull these documents right online through your municipal township. And there is something called filing for a trade name. Um, so sometimes it's referred to as a DBA. I think uh, in New Jersey, we really do look to call it a trade name. It's where you'll be able to pay about 50 or $60. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, your name will be unique in, within your county. You'll get approval to use that name. It doesn't have to be unique in the state um, per se. Uh, I believe the search really does uh, confine itself within the county in which you live. Um, again, maybe $50, $60. You are uh, free then to uh, transact business. You can register that trade name with the Division of Revenue and Enterprise Services. And in doing so, you can use your social security number as your tax ID. You do not need a separate employer identification number. Social security number is accepted. If you wish to get an EIN from uh, the IRS, you could certainly do so. It's not required. What's nice about getting an EIN that is a uh, IRS provided tax identification number is that it can protect your identity. So even though you don't have to, we're seeing more and more sole proprietors deciding to go to the IRS, apply for an EIN for their sole proprietorship. So they don't have to necessarily be, you know, writing their social security number down um, every time they're asked for a tax ID. You're allowed to use your personal bank account to transact business. So as you um, transact, sell goods, provide services, and are paid for, your, for, for such goods and services, you can deposit the money straight into your personal bank account. Um, no separate bank account is necessary. And the tax filing is pretty simple. Um, your income, uh, from the business is passed through to your personal income tax return using the Schedule C attachment. It's just a uh, IRS document. It's called a Schedule T C. It attaches straight to your personal return and any uh, sales expenses are reflected in the Schedule C and that income um, gets passed through and it'll get calculated for tax purposes. There is no legal separation between the assets of the owner and the business. So you are one and the same with your business. There's no liability protection. So that's the downside. Even though it is simple, it's relatively um, inexpensive, uh, there is the potential for uh, issue down the road if liability is a question for you. You are not separate from the business. And so you have to be aware that you do not have liability protection as an owner of a sole pro pro proprietorship. Okay. So second up is the LLC. So in terms of liability protection, we would think of the LLC as kind of being next up on the continuum of protection. It's a a great vehicle for small business owners and large business owners. It doesn't have to be just small business owners. 
relatively inexpensive to form. Um, I have here that it's 128 to form. That is incorrect. I should um, correct the slide. It's 125 to form. There is a 350 processing fee if you use a credit or a debit card. So that's why I kind of rounded that up. But just so you know, in general, if you see the number 125, New Jersey does uh, charge a state filing fee of 125 to form the LLC. And there is an additional $75 per year uh, requirement to be paid in maintenance dues. So every year at the anniversary of your formation, you'll be prompted to file an annual report. They call it filing the annual report. It's nothing cumbersome. It's it's just a matter of logging into the portal, checking that everything is the same, and uh, providing a credit or debit or an e-check to uh, pay your dues, and then you uh, maintain your LLC in good standing. So that's once a year. Um, with the LLC, you would in fact, get a tax ID number assigned to the LLC, and that is through the IRS. So there's your EIN. You are required to get a tax ID from the IRS. Um, this now is um, a business structure where you are now going to be separate from your, your business. Um, this is what allows for the limited liability. Separate business banking account is now required. You must open a separate business bank account in order to transact business. It must be in the name of the LLC, the legal name of the LLC, and your tax letter from the IRS should match the um, legal name on your certificate of formation, you go to the bank, you open a business bank account, and you're good to go. Um, you're as as the owner of an LLC, you are provided a choice on how you wish to be taxed. LLCs are pretty flexible in that way. There's a lot of flexibility in running an LLC, and one of those uh, flexible options are how to be taxed. If you are one person, you're considered a single member. Member means owner in LLC terminology, or I guess a single payer, um, but single member owner, you are allowed and will default to the Schedule C tax filing. Now, if you recall, I just spoke about the Schedule C as the sole proprietor option, and that's exactly what it is. You're basically being taxed as if you were a sole proprietor because you're one person, you're a single member, not a sole proprietor, but you're a single member LLC, and you can be taxed using the Schedule C tax option. Very simple. Now, if you're more than one person, you're now a multi-member LLC, and that tax uh, uh, choice usually would default to the Form 1065. That is usually seen in partnership arrangements as a partnership tax filing. You're not a partnership, you're a multi-member LLC, but you can use the partnership tax filing, which is the form 1065. Whether you're a single member or you're a multi-member LLC, you also have the option to be taxed as a corporation. That's something that we can discuss in a little bit more detail later in the presentation. But that is an option to you. Um, there are times when the LLC may decide that it's more economically and tax advantageous to change their tax filing to that of the S-Corp. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that. But as you can see, you have some flexibility on how you wish to be taxed. Now, um, the corporation is the most protected in terms of our corporate structure, um, definitely requires much more paperwork in the formation. It's more expensive uh, to run. It's more expensive to manage in terms of uh, tax filings. There are requirements to incorporate you must establish bylaws. You are required to create a board of directors, hold shareholder meetings. There are um, compelling cases why sometimes a small business may need to incorporate. And 
even though it's not ideal, I would say it's done and, and it's done for various reasons. Mostly, I think, relating to liability protection. There are certain industries and businesses that lend itself to requiring and needing maybe a stronger corporate structure. Uh, when you think of um, home, you know, home builders or contractors sometimes or uh, trucking, uh, those who, who drive um uh, trucks or freights, they 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 are there are times when vendors only really wish to do business with those uh, business companies that are incorporated, or maybe even some professional service companies like um, medical practices and whatnot. Um, they can uh, form professional corporations. So it does have to do with the liability protection. And you will see sometimes single owners incorporate and they create a board of directors. They have shareholder meetings. It sounds silly, but uh, the paperwork is there. Um, you you have your documentation that that's what you're doing. And, you know, the only thing to keep in mind is that on taxation, a corporate um, tax structure is is burdensome for could be very burdensome for a small business uh corporations have separate tax returns they have their own tax rate assigned to them so um once you clear your sales expenses get to your net income line there's a corporate tax rate assigned to the company and then whatever is left is your profit and then now you as the shareholder are now required to pay taxes on those dividends so that's why sometimes you'll hear the, the corporation um, being a double taxation uh, structure um, is 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 not the best in terms of um, I would say um, economic uh, advantage for a small business owner. So there are options to address that, which I'm going to get to. But I just want to add that whether you're the sole proprietor, you're the LLC, or the corporation. Once you go through the formation process of each of those three structures, where as sole proprietor, you get the paperwork at the county clerks, the LLC, the corporation, all of this can be done right online, which we're going to talk about. Once you actually form the businesses, all three of them do require you then to register the business. So that's a separate step at the end that no matter how you form, New Jersey at the end of the day expects you to go through the NJ registration process. It's a, it's it's um, mandatory. And that is where you uh, take your business and you say, yes, I'm ready to transact business. And you answer a number of questions related to regulation and taxes, employment, and then you're giving a business registration certificate. So I just wanted to make that clear that there's the, um, that step. Okay, so let's see, um, moving on. So as we were talking about the C-Corp having the double taxation, if you decide to incorporate as a small business, you do have the option to uh, apply for S-Corp tax filing status. And what that does is it does el eliminate the double taxation. You're no longer subject to a corporate tax rate. Uh, a corporation that has S corp tax status um, now uh, will uh, file a separate tax return for the business, but all the profit will then be distributed to the shareholders, where the income taxes will be paid by the various uh, shareholders. So um, it, it is. There are some stipulations. Uh, for, for corporations and requirements in order to get the S Corp status. It has to do with um, the type of stock you, you issue. It can only be common stock. I think there can't be any more than 100 shareholders. But for very small businesses that do have to incorporate, they, they most likely will apply for that S Corp uh, tax status. Now, as I mentioned before, LLC owners may also choose to be taxed as an S Corp. Um, not that they're corporations, um, but they're LLCs that are given the option, if if it makes sense, uh, to go ahead and, and be taxed as an S Corp. Well, what does that do? Typically, LLCs are owners of, well, they are, they're owners of the business, and they will get their um, income from the profit line. It's an owner's draw. 
you, you pay yourself through the profits. There are times, you know, when you get to a certain point, you make a certain amount of money where the self-employment taxes become burdensome to the point where it might be more tax advantageous to change how you are taxed. By choosing S-Corp tax status, it allows owners of the LLC to put themselves on payroll and they can there by doing that they now become employee of their own company and the uh structure of the income statement now is different and you have withholdings being taken out of your paycheck as if you were an employee of any other company that can reduce your net income and it does can protect potentially uh uh, uh, minimize your self-employment taxes. Now, that's a formula that can only be figured out with your accountant. Um, it's not something that we would tell you to do one way or another, but um, it is something to discuss, I would say, with a, with a, an accountant to see what would be more advantageous. At what point, at what threshold would it make sense? Uh, may never be, but if it is, it's something that you would discuss with your accountant. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about the LLC. Um, we say, get it right the first time. We do not believe you have to pay a third party to do what you can and should be able to do for yourself. Now, having said that, um, I understand. You get online, it looks all easy. Now you get through the first couple of questions and you're like, I don't know how to answer that. Oh no, I did something wrong. So it's a little bit of a hybrid. Um, yes, you'd like to save six or seven hundred dollars and uh, not have to go through legal zoom and not know what's going on and just, you know, pay through the nose to get your LLC done. But at the same time, you're a little you're nervous that maybe you're not doing it right. Well, that is why reach out to us. You have a counselor assigned to you. We will guide you and assist you through the formation and registration at no cost to you. We do not charge for our services. So we'll make sure that you do it. You get it right. All the paperwork is done. You answer the questions. And not only that, but you understand them. Um, there's nothing worse than someone doing something for you. And then down the road, someone asks you something about your business and you're not quite sure. You don't know the terminology because you didn't do it yourself. So I do personally think that when you're actually forming and registering the business yourself, it's a good time to ask questions. What does that mean? What does that mean as a business owner? Um and 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 that way you're knowledgeable. You're the business owner. You should be knowledgeable about what you're doing. You should understand what each piece of paper means and when and where you might need it. So that's what we're here for. And we'll make sure you familiarize yourself with the portal. Everything can be done straight from the portal um, and the IRS. Like we don't go to outside sources. We go straight to the government website. We uh, get the formation done right through the NJ portal. We get the registration done right through the portal. When we get your EIN, we go to the IRS. We have to be very careful. There are third party scammers out there who offer services that look very legit and say, you know, click here, we're going to get your EIN, and you think you're dealing with the government, next thing you know, you've got given all this information, you get to the bottom line, and it says, um, please uh, pay $350, and we'll give you your, your, your EIN immediately. And then people do that. The EIN is free. There's no cost, there's no charge to apply for an EIN. Uh, you get the online application right from the IRS and you're done. You get it immediately. Uh, so just be aware of, of things like that. Always look to make sure that you're on the right site. That's why doing it with us will make sure that you are. Uh, we want to make sure you understand all your obligations, what you have to do, um, requirements as, as LLC owners, paying your annual dues, uh, making sure that you're set up properly with your banking, making sure that you understand your responsibilities to pay estimated income taxes. So these are the types of things that it's good to talk with somebody because you don't necessarily have experience with this um, in, in your life until you become a business owner. Okay, and bookkeeping is important too. We really like to emphasize the importance of understanding that you understand 
the flow of, of money in and out of the business um, and how that might work with respect to your not only keeping track of your books, but also being aware of um, your own spending, personal spending, um, and how to make sure you account for that when you're doing um, business work, when you're investing in your business. Okay, so this is a whole slide dedicated to don't forget to register the business. So again, remember the formation in, in New Jersey, every state's a little different. So it's a, it can be confusing for some people. Uh, but in New Jersey, you have to physically go to that next step, continue to registration. And for whatever reason, when you hire an accountant, you hire a lawyer, legal zooms and business, you pay them all this money, they will only do the articles of formation, get the tax ID, other bells and whistles that you don't even need that you're probably paying for. But they hand you everything and they don't tell you that you still have to register to transact business. You have to go to NJ Reg. So at a minimum, if you've hired somebody already and you've had it done, check in with us. We'll look to make sure that you're registered because if you're not, you have to be registered. Um, it does not cost anything to register, but it is a requirement. When COVID came and we had um, some, some government grants and programs that were, were, were coming out. Um, we were trying to help businesses as much as possible. Uh, one of the things that was required to, in order to even be eligible for some of these grants was, well, okay, let me see your business registration certificate. And people were handing me their certificate of formation, their letter from the IRS. No, that, that didn't, that, that just shows that you have a, a, an LLC formed in New Jersey it does not show that you're registered to do business. And so many businesses were stuck because they did not have that business registration certificate and then were therefore not eligible for grant money through the state during that time um, or any time right now, even as grants come out and programs come through, um, one of the requirements would be that you're a registered New Jersey business. A new requirement that is now out with the federal government is this new beneficial ownership information report. I don't know that that's necessarily new as it's new that now all LLCs are required to fill it out. Uh, that's just an extra step that you all take after you're done registering. We remind you about it. Uh, you'll get notification from the state it's pretty straightforward. Basically, up until now, all you know, LLCs are state regulated, and um, all the ownership information for LLCs are really, I guess, managed at the state level. So, uh, given recent issues with LLCs being used for fraudulent purposes as tax shelters, um, money laundering all sorts of interesting things. I guess the federal government now wants to make sure that they have a database and know what LLCs are out there and who owns them. So it's just uh, basically entering your information. They're gonna want a copy of your driver's license or some kind of identification that you'll upload, um, who you are, what your ownership is, and it'll just, it's a one-time thing. Uh, they give you, right now they're giving new businesses 90 days to, um, 90 days to file this report. It's online. It's all done online. Uh, by next year, I think they're going to shorten that to 30 days. I know there's like difference in where you read it, but um, I believe for at least 2024 as we're rolling it out. Um, once you've actually gotten your registration certificate, you have a period of time, I believe 90 days to get it, to get this um, handled. Any LLCs formed prior to 2024, uh, if you say formed back prior to January 1st, 2024, they are giving us a year to go in and, and, and submit this uh, report. So you'll have the full 2024 to, to do it. I did it myself. It took only a couple of minutes. Okay. Oh, and please know that this is free. There's no charge. In the beginning, I heard some scams of, of, of people saying, oh, you have to do this. 
send me, you know, get this, you're going to get in trouble if you don't um, fill out this information, write me a check for $100 and um, I'll make sure it's done. It, you, you can do it yourself. Um, do not pay somebody, do not give somebody else your social security number. You don't have to do that. It's, it's meant to be done by yourself. Um, it's just a couple of uh, tidbits of information and you want to make sure that, um, you're not paying somebody else to do something that is, is uh, no cost to you. Okay. So what do you need to have to start a business? Well, you'll need a unique business name in New Jersey. There's a portal there. Um, you will get access to these slides, so you'll be able to look through um, all these links. Um, but you'll be able to see that's the exact link to the database to search for name availability. It's your legal name must be unique. You'll need your EIN. Get that for free. We'll need some industry codes. Uh, there are databases that will be able to identify what where you fall, even though there could be a number of classifications that suit you, you only have to pick one for the purposes of the formation and registration. Uh, it, it's basically a statistical way of keeping track of who's forming businesses in New Jersey. You'll need a New Jersey registered agent. You can be your own registered agent in New Jersey. You don't have to hire somebody. You are permitted to be your own, but if you do wish um, to uh, outsource that to somebody else, the cost will depend on on who you choose and what you ch you know what services you pick. Uh, really, the only thing you need is for. I mean, this is something we can discuss offline. But the purpose of the registered agent is to have a um, person, location, brick and mortar spot um, that can receive important information, mail, um, legal documents if necessary from the state. It is where um, if anyone had to get in touch with you or someone had to mail something to you or if someone had to come knock on your door and deliver, God forbid, some sort of a um, notice, <laughs> legal documents, they can't just show up and there be a PO box in the middle of the grass. So that's what the New Jersey registered agent is. It's required. And you can be your own registered agent. You don't need to hire someone to do that. Now, if you're a multi-member LLC, you need an operating agreement that is required. You have to make sure that everything that's in there is explaining of what you would like. LLCs are pretty flexible in terms of... Um, how owners might decide to run the business, you know, what the initial contributions are going to be, what the profit share is going to be, what the management roles are going to be. And, and probably most important, if you were to dissolve the LLC, what the distribution of assets um, would look like. Uh, so that's important. You can certainly have a lawyer handle it for you. You don't have to. Um, I think once you get into more than two, three, four, five people entering into a, a legal agreement, I would recommend that possibly uh, not a bad idea to have a lawyer set that up for you. Um, again, 125, you'll have to have a debit or credit card available. You can use an e-check. And you'll need to know the names, addresses, social security numbers of all the owners and the percents that are going to be uh, distributed among the, the different members. And what you need to know, you will have to pick how you wish to be taxed. As we discussed, as an LLC, you can be a Schedule C if you're one person. You can be a 1065 if you're more than one person. And um, either one can decide at some point if you'd like to be taxed as an S. -Corp. So uh, the other thing that you'll need to know is if you're selling goods or services, are they subject to New Jersey state sales tax? Are you eligible to make exempt purchases? Well, let's think about it. I mean, first of all, there are in, in the Division of Taxation, there's a booklet, there's a link to this later on in the presentation. It goes through all the different uh, good services, what's taxable, what's not taxable. You think you might know the answer. It's not always clear, always good to check. 
even though uh, goods are typically subject to sales tax, there are except exceptions to that, um, such as clothing, basic clothing. Even though services are subject, usually not subject to state sales tax, again, we have exceptions. Cleaning services are subject to sales tax. So, and that's a service. So, you know, these are the types of things that come up in the registration piece of the uh, formation registration when we get to the NJ reg. Will you be collecting sales tax? Will you be making exempt purchases? Making exempt purchases, if you're a retailer and you're purchasing goods to sell, you will, uh, and you're in New Jersey and you're purchasing from um, uh, someplace in New Jersey, you can provide your exemption certificate and you will not be charged sales tax because you're not the end user. You are the retailer. You're, you're taking in the product, you're collecting inventory, you're doing what you're doing. Once you sell that taxable item to somebody in New Jersey or shipping it to someone in New Jersey, you're the one who charges the sales tax, you collect it, and each quarter you remit it to the, to the uh, division of taxation. These are the types of things we can go over, we can walk you through it and make sure you understand. Uh, you'll need to know if your business requires additional registrations, such as a general contractor's registration as an example. Um, there are um, home health aides need uh, certain licenses, food safety certifications. So depending on what you're doing, we can show you where to go to look to see if there's anything in addition that you may need to conduct your business. And then you'll want to identify a bank where you'll open up your business bank account. Always best not to pay fees. No need for a small business to pay fees. Just find out from the bank what the process is. How is is there a program? Is there a certain amount of money you need to have in or the certain number of transactions you might need to make a month? Um, but the one thing you would like to avoid as a small business owner, if possible, is that you don't want to pay any monthly fees. And here are some more links that when you get the slides, you can you can take a look. Um, we have the licenses and the registration, sales tax requirements, income tax. You, want, you know, when you're self-employed, one thing to keep in mind is that you don't wait until April 15th to pay a full year's worth of income taxes. It is not allowed. Um, there are requirements, there are thresholds that if you owe a certain amount of state or federal income tax each quarter up to a certain amount, you must pay, you would likely need to pay that quarterly. You want to make sure that you're not, you personally can't, don't want to wait and the government doesn't want to wait. So that's something you would have to learn a little bit about. Um, I think they make it fairly easy. There are apps, the IRS has an app to pay your estimated, um, my understanding. And um, there's information out there. You can always speak to an accountant about how to set that up. Uh, things to know about hiring employees versus independent contractors. Do you know the difference? Employees are classified as uh, payroll uh, workers. They're, they're, they're issued um, W-2 and um, they fill out a W-4, they get the W-2. You are withholding uh, expenses with, and, and they're withholding taxes and you're running a payroll. Independent contractors, that's what they are. They're independent. You, um, If you're going to pay somebody to do a service intermittently or or just uh, over time, uh, and, and that seems to be the right setup for your business, then you would have them fill out a W-9. And then at the end of the year, you'd issue a 1099, and then they would be responsible for paying their own taxes. Okay. And then there's always questions about insurance and workers' compensation. We can talk about that as well. Now, when you're starting up, you're going to need a certain amount of cash, understanding what your startup needs are. Operating cash is once you're actually in the process of working and transacting business, how much money do you need to generate each month in order to keep the lights on? There will be personal budget considerations in terms of your own capital contributions into the business. And will you need additional sources of capital? 
Sometimes we need some startup funding. Uh, sometimes we need a loan for maybe some capital, you know, equipment or working capital to until we're up on our feet. We work with lenders. We can help you. We can loan prep you and make sure that you're moving in the right direction with your business plan and with your any kind of if you have to put together income statement projections for the purposes of a loan. We really want you to understand your financial statements. We're not all, you know, we it, it is business owners. You have a craft, you have a skill, you have a profession. Doesn't mean that you went to school for accounting. So we that's understandable, but it is very important that you understand that you should have a certain amount of financial literacy in order to be able to know that you are, taking in more than you're spending over time because otherwise you're never going to be profitable. And that the bottom line is why are we all doing this if, we, if we're we not going to be profitable? And it can be tricky. So if you have clean books and understand the income statement, understand your balance sheet, your cash flows, you can always take some classes on the side. We offer some, some webinars. Uh, there are ways that you can enrich yourself in terms of your financial literacy so that you could be better for your business. And same goes with bookkeeping. We've offered some nice classes and QuickBooks. You know, whether you use a notebook, an Excel spreadsheet, or you decide to go with a QuickBooks, there are services out there that will help you. And um, some of them are free. Um, we have offered QuickBooks in the past. Um, hopefully we can do that again. Sometimes you're going to need professional services. And we will tell you, we'll be honest, we're not accountants. Well, we may be, but we're not your accountant. Um, we're not lawyers, um, not your lawyer. If I don't think we have any lawyers on staff. But it, it's important to know that uh, when it comes to certain transactions, certain things, as a business owner, you may have to seek professional services. And these are some of them that are that that you know, accountants and lawyers, for the most part, are where it, you know you don't want to skimp on that. You want to make sure that if you're doing something that involves the law or you're 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 not sure about the accounting, best to speak with a professional. Insurance agents, you know, they should be able to give you their time. They should be able to explain policies, give you uh, you know some education. I think that's important, depending on what line of work you're in. Lenders, we can introduce you to lenders. Lenders have been, especially on the small business side in New Jersey, they're 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 very helpful. They're they're friendly. They they try to teach as they go along. Um, so you know, you they're always there to to at least have an initial conversation with you. And with marketing and social media, we have counselors on staff here that are specifically focused on that. So before going out and spending a fortune, ask to speak to a SBDC social media or marketing counselor. It can maybe give you some ideas and brainstorm. We're here to be business mentors and help and at least assist in any way we can. And other things the SBDC offers is once you're formed and registered and you're interested in maybe moving on to procurement, seeking government contracts, perhaps getting a New Jersey state certification, as in small business enterprise, woman, minority, veteran, disabled veteran, and LGBTQ plus certifications, we can assist with that. We do that at no cost. Um, so if you need counseling on that, you can always speak to a counselor about how to go about that. And same thing with lending, assistance with preparing you for lending. The NJEDA is a tremendous resource in our state for um, financing, grants, programs, uh, low interest loans. It just depends on the day what programs they're offering. So if you need help with those applications, we've run some labs on that or we can walk you through some of that. Um, and that's it. We have a lot of educational programming through the NJSBDC. If you just look at it in our library or video library, you can see topics of interest, see what's coming up. We want to remain a uh, resource for you from start to finish. And with that, I think we're done. We can turn it over to Q&A, but I just want to say here that if you're interested in forming your business and you have not yet formed, you can scan the top code 
And that'll take you to requests for counseling that will um, talk you to a business startup person, um, might be me, it might be my colleague, but we can get you formed and registered. If you're already in business and you have questions on any of the other topics that were mentioned, you can scan right here and you'll get assigned to a counselor to discuss your questions. And I think with that, we'll turn it over to some Q&A. Yep, some Q&A time. Um, just before we get into the Q&A, uh, I would just want to share a couple of reminders that I shared earlier when we started the webinar. So number one, this webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our YouTube channel as well as our video library. So if you go to YouTube and you just type NJSBDC, NJS Thrives, or just NJSBDC, then you should be able to find our um, videos and you can watch the recordings there. Um, also, if you'd like to request counseling, Vanessa has just put up the links on the screen. So you can just type that up into Google. You can receive the slides um, via completing this brief survey that we have. Again, I will share the screens in the chat. So just keep an eye out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's go through the Q&A in the order that we received them. So number one, we received a question from Jisun who asked, I have LLC company if I want to use a different name, but under my LLC, can I do that? Yes, you can file for what's known as an alternate business name. Mm -hmm. So when you have an LLC legal name um, and you're, you're formed and registered and say for marketing purposes, or uh, normally it's for you know a way to differentiate because maybe you're doing something different underneath the LLC umbrella, you can file for an alternate business name and it costs $50 for five years and it's done right through the portal. It's pretty simple to do. So, and you can have as many, uh, there's some people call them DBAs, doing business as, um, you know, it's not, remember, it's not your legal name. You can't put LLC after it, but you can absolutely identify yourself under that name once you let the, uh, the, the New Jersey know that you're going to operate under the alternate business name as well. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Next question is from Samantha. Uh, Samantha says, thank you so much for this. If we formed a business as a podcast, but then we want to change the podcast into a blog, would we need to dissolve and start a new business or can we continue using the current registration? No, you would. You definitely do not have to dissolve. Um, so LLCs are pretty flexible. I mean, you can do pretty much, I mean, I don't want to say whatever you want to do, but you can, you, you can run as many different types of businesses under that LLC as as appropriate. I mean, if you're doing, you know, I, you're probably referring to the fact that maybe when you formed and registered, you were given, asked to provide a code and it was specific to podcasts and now you want to do blogs and like, that's fine. That's fine. Um, you can you can certainly pivot within your LLC and 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 change course. Um, so yeah, you definitely would not have to dissolve it to do that. All right, thank you. Um, if at any time we're answering the uh, the Q and A, we're going through the Q and A and we answer your question. But if something doesn't make sense or you'd like to clarify, um, if we couldn't answer the question properly, just Feel free to clarify. Let us know again uh, if if it's something that you meant or you didn't mean that. Um, all right, next question. Um, more of sort of a clarification sort of thing. Christina is asking, um, what website do you go to to actually file and form the LLC? NJPortal.com is the best way to get there njportal.com. So let me quickly just put that, or if you can put that in the chat, Vanessa. Sure.
All right. So that was njportal.com. Yeah, that's I'll put it, I'll put it in the Jersey. chat. Yeah, that's where you can go. Um, I mean, it'll take you where you eventually need to go. It's like the easiest thing to remember. That's how I always get in. Basically, what it does is you'll get in, you'll scroll down, you'll see um, Division of Revenue and Enterprise Services. And underneath that, there's business, all your choices. And you would, if you're, you would start with the business formation, you click on business formation, it'll take you where you need to go. All right. So that has been shared. Um, all right. Next question. All right. So Christina was also just making sure that she has the right steps laid out according to her understanding for forming the LLC. So she just like lays out the steps. Um, Christina, if you if we can help you with uh, your formation and registration, then um, if you need help with that, go to ngsbc.com forward slash startup and we can confirm. All right. So next follow-up question was, can you have multiple different services and selling goods under one LLC? Or can you also have multiple DBAs under one LLC? Both, both. So you don't have to have DBAs to have multiple services. So I have to just do this by example. So say I have my LLC is called Vanessa's LLC and I do a bunch of things. I'm just Vanessa's LLC. I sell jewelry, I tutor, I, what else do I do? What else can I do? <laughs> I counsel. So, you know, and then, but, but, but people may not know from the name what I do. So I get frustrated and I say, you know, I, I'm legally allowed to do these different services or sell my goods. You know, as long as I'm properly formed and registered the right way, I do my thing. Um, but 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 in the name, I feel like, OK, it doesn't really capture it. I think I'd like to do an alternate business name so I can go on to the portal. I can file alternate business name and I can now be Vanessa's tutoring. Which is a DBA under Vanessa's LLC or <clears throat> Vanessa's counseling. So you can set up the DBA, which allows for better, I think, communication, for better marketing, for to differentiate maybe what your services are. But if you don't, and you still have different services under the LLC, as long as you're, you know, not breaking any rules with licensing, you know, as long as you're properly set up, you don't have to have the DBA. You can operate and do different services under one legal name. Uh, just make sure that you're properly uh, protected in terms of insurance. If some of the services are more um, chance for more liability issues, just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're protected. So I hope that answers the question. All right, moving on to the next question. Give me one moment. All right. So Liana asks, why when do you when you do a name search for a business name that is registered, it doesn't show up, especially the DBAs. Why do they not show up? There seem to be two different name search databases. There's only one for the state. Um, and that's that site that I showed you uh, for legal business name. And that is for anybody who has actually filed articles of formation or, or or incorporation that has to be unique. And that's the legal business name. The DBAs are not part of that. There could be, the DBAs are not necessarily unique. They are not part of that database. So if you have a DBA and someone else has the same DBA, my understanding is that that's not, that's not going to be um, regulated. So I'm not sure what you mean by two databases. Uh, the one that I'm aware of is from the portal. It's the one I think I showed you up here. This right here, unique business name in New Jersey. Now, obviously I don't expect everybody to memorize this here you can get to it through see 
you'll get to it through the njportal.com. And then it'll, you could look for name search availability. But then if you get the slides, this link will take you right there. Oh, how about I do that? Take me right there. So this is the business name search. You can see here, and you would put the name in. This is only going to search for legal business names, not DBAs. So I don't know, I hope that answers the question. All right, hopefully. Um, so Liana had followed up saying, I'll find the two links and send it. One shows my business name, the other doesn't. So okay. let's do this then, make an appointment, Liana, um, with Vanessa and her team. So just go to rangelsbdc.com forward slash startup. And let's try to figure out uh, what the issue is. All right. Next question from Marcia. If I am already registered as an LLC in another state, can I do business in New Jersey? Uh, it, it well, yes, yes, and um, it 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 depends um, how you go about that. So, if in order to if you're going to be physically in New Jersey working, but your LLC is formed in a different state, then what you have to do is register in New Jersey as a foreign. So instead of forming um, uh, what would be known as a domestic LLC, you would have to file for a foreign, so filing a foreign LLC, and you would pick your registered agent, you'd have to have your, you know, set up, and then you can register the foreign in New Jersey, and that would legally allow you to transact business in New Jersey. Now, I'm assuming that's because you're and this is why I would highly recommend you make an appointment so we make sure that we understand what it is that you're you're talking about. I mean, if you're in Pennsylvania and you wanted to, you know, sell something to somebody in New Jersey and you're just mailing it to them, no, you don't have to register to do business in New Jersey for that. But um, yeah, yes, if you're physically in New Jersey and you want to transact business in New Jersey, if your LLC is formed somewhere else, you have to, uh, it's called um, forming a foreign and we can help you with that. All right, next question is, um, how do I get tax exemption from Samson? How do you get tax exemption? Yes. Well, I don't know what you, if you're referring to sales tax, if you're talking about sales tax exemption, because that's what I did address in the presentation. If you're a retailer and you need to purchase whole, um, wholesale or you need to purchase um, items that are going to be in your cost of goods sold that you should be exempt from because you are going to be charging sales tax. All of that is handled through the NJ registration. And once you say yes to a collector of sales tax and yes, I will be making exempt purchases, the Registration certificate will then come with something known as a certificate of authority. And that's what you can have as proof that you have authority to file exemption certificates on certain sales, on certain items from sales tax and um, are allowed to charge sales tax. And if that doesn't answer the question, I would make an appointment they if you're did, talking about something else. They did mean, mean sales tax and their follow yeah. answer. Yeah, you get a certificate of authority um, when you're done with your registration. Okay. Um, next question is from Samantha. If we do not generate any revenue for the business within a certain time frame, are we required to dissolve the business or are there more fees involved? As long as you pay your $75 a year, your business will stay in good standing, whether you're earning any money or transacting or not. So regardless of what you're doing necessarily, if you want to keep your name and keep your LLC in good standing, you're required to pay the $75 a year. Now, if you're not doing anything with the business and necessarily, and you just tired of paying your $75 a year and it's just not something you want to continue, you can dissolve. Cost one hundred and twenty-five dollars to dissolve your business, 
Or if you just say, hey, I know I'm going to get to it at some point. Let me just keep my LLC, pay your dues. And clearly you don't pay income taxes if you're not doing anything, if you have no income. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so hopefully that answers the question. Got it. Uh, next question is from Annabella, who says, I have registered three years ago, but the past two years I have had no business. I have not paid the annual fees. Should I dissolve the LLC and start all over when I'm ready? No, I wouldn't do that until, because what, what, what I've seen is, all right, so it costs $125 to close it. Now, they're not going to let you close it until you pay your last two years of dues. So they get you. So that's not an option because if that's the case, then you might as well just pay your last two years of dues and keep it opened until you're ready to go. So um, it's not until you're about four or five years in that, that for, and, and I'm not saying this definitively, it's what I've noticed over the years, that if somebody is at least, and I can't say for certain, but once you get to the four or five year mark where you haven't paid your dues, the, the name becomes available again. It's still there. And if you want it back and the name is available, not only do you have to pay every year since then, there's a reinstatement fee. Now, two years out, you're not going to see the reinstatement fee unless something's changed. Like really what would happen is you'd log in and it would just show that you owe $75 for this year, $75 for this year, your total is, um, you know, 150 and you pay it and you can, now you're up to date. So you can't, they won't even let you close it unless you pay your back dues. All right. Hopefully that answers your question. If not, uh, always make an appointment. Next question. All right. Um, next question is from Marie Mathilde who asks, is the business registration certificate the same as the notice of appointment as registered agent? Thank you. No. The, the notice of being a registered agent is just the state identifying the fact that you are the person who has been selected to receive all notifications from the state. You're, that's the registered agent. The registration to transact business is a whole other process. And the result of that would be something known as a business registration certificate. Okay, next question is from Uintaga, who says, can I change the formation to do other things? Um, can you say that again? It's not in here. Can I change my formation to do other things? Uh, that's all they've asked. And the second question they've asked is, using DBA, would I process my taxes the same as original business formation? Yes, yes. The DBA is just a marketing tool, really, an identification tool. All your books and income and tax paperwork is under the LLC umbrella. So you would pull up all your revenues from all your different businesses, um, come up with your sales number, all your expenses, and your net income. So yeah, the taxes are all filed under the LLC legal name. And with your formation, if you decided you, you formed to do one thing and then decided now you want to do something else, you can perfectly do that as long as there is like, you know, as long as there are additional requirements. Like if you were um, a tutor and then you decided that you wanted to open up a restaurant, I mean, clearly you have to then get licenses for food safety and all that kind of thing, but you can operate under the same LLC umbrella. That's not a problem. All right. Um, quick shout out to Rudy, who says, thank you, Vanessa and SBC team. I need to switch to another meeting. All right. Thank you for staying back, uh, back Rudy. Um, okay. And we have, so it's 1.13 p.m. Um, we have two more questions. Um, and we'll get to them. And 
We have a couple of people saying thank you, Vanessa, for answering their questions. Um, I registered my business four years ago. I've been taking certification courses in my chosen field before starting to do business. I wrote off the costs of these certifications, but have had little actual business. Will my business be audited by the IRS? You know, I really can't answer that. I, I could not, there's no way I could know if you're going to be audited or not. Yeah. I can tell you that as a business owner, there are expenses that you can take um, in terms of running your business. The specifics on deductions when it comes to professional um, certifications and, to, you know, I think within, uh, uh, certainly I would in, in a certain respect, there's, that's, that's, it could, it could be con constituted as a business expense, but there might be a limit. And this is where the accountant comes in because I'm not up to date on all the uh, deductions. It's not, I'm not an accountant. So that's something I would consider speaking with to an accountant. But, but just the question in general, sometimes there are businesses that are may not be yet earning much in terms of revenue, but they are incurring expenses. And you can file your schedule C, um, you can show that you've made investment in your business. Um, you can take a loss, I suppose. Um, I, I, but I would talk to an accountant. I mean, you certainly don't want, I understand the question. You don't want to have some auditor taking a look at the last few years of your tax returns and see nothing but, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of deductions and, you know, well, where is this going? Could it raise a red, red flag? Possibly. I would speak to an accountant. All right. And that concludes our Q&A. We, we don't have any more questions. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just quickly share my screen. And um, give me one moment. So we do have upcoming webinars that I'd like to share with everyone from the NGSBC team. Can you see my screen, Vanessa? Yes, all good. Okay, perfect. So we have on Thursday, we are of course, today is March uh, 5th and March is Women's History Month. So happy Women's History Month. And um, on March 7th, we have a webinar specifically for women-owned businesses. So Google Maps Enhancements for Women-Owned Businesses with uh, Nicole Russell. Uh, Nicole is an Education Marketing Director from WCEC, which is the Women's Business Center. And same time as always, um, 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., and we are celebrating Women's History Month. So if you are interested in this, this will boost your visibility and attract more customers by enhancing your business on Google Maps. So if this is something that you've been looking for, or if you know someone who could benefit from this, then please let them know about this webinar. Um, and I hope to see you all there. You can scan the QR code or just go to celebrating woman, uh, women's month .com. Um one more upcoming webinar that we have March 19th, application walkthrough workshop for the NJ Treasury Minority Certification for MWSVBE and LGBTQ+. Uh, certifying your business provides access to local and state contract opportunities, grants and resources for underserved businesses, low interest loans. Uh, this is an in-person event. It is happening on March 19th from 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. in the evening. Uh, exact location can be disclosed to you once you register, but it is in Madison, New Jersey. There are requirements, so bring your own laptop. Have all the required documents saved as PDF ready to be uploaded. Once you go to this link over here, bit.ly uh, forward slash 3TBIORE. A little tricky, but if you scan the QR code or put that into Google, you'll find there, fill out that form, and um, you can, you'll find more information. 
All right. So that is all from us today. And just BC has helped 15,000 plus small businesses grow. No cost small business consulting, turning around starting at zero dollars, exclusive small businesses just like this one. I believe, I know it's a biased opinion, but I think at jazzbdc.com, our website is for a resource. Please check it out. Take a moment um, out of your day, a couple of minutes. Just go through our website and you'll find blog uh, posts, you'll find podcasts, you'll find statewide events and webinars that are happening, whether it is at a cost or at no cost, uh, whether, whether it is in person or is online. We do offer services. Uh, we do offer counseling in Spanish. So if you'd like to request um, uh, services, counseling services with a Spanish speaking consultant, all you have to do is just let us know and we'll connect you with them. So this has been a great pleasure. See you on Thursday. Uh, I hope if you are somewhere in New Jersey, if it's raining, stay dry, stay cozy. Take care. See you on Thursday. Bye. Thank you, Isabel. Bye. Yeah, thanks, Vanessa. Bye.